Welcome to another episode of Only Time Can Tell. I'm your host, Ken. Remember, before we begin, don't forget to share, like, and subscribe. So this way you get notified every time new episodes come out. Very important. And it also helps us to grow the channel. Um, remember, we tend to focus on what success looks like in as many different formats. And that leads me to my next guest. My man Rakim. Rakim, how are you, brother? I'm all right, chilling. Yo, he is the straight guy. <laughs> like, no, my business. <laughs> well, welcome to another episode of uh, Bringing Your Hands to Our Show. It's a lot of practice, man. <laughs> so, like I said, so. <laughs> so, so Press the subscribe button. <laughs> so, so oh, like I said, the shit. whole purpose of our show, man, is. We want to oh, show shit. our viewers what success looks like, and we're using you as a template this episode. But you're yeah. using the wrong goddamn individual <laughs> if you want to say what success looks like. <laughs> well, obviously, he's a comedian, right? Yeah. I think it's a, <laughs> this right. failure in a motherfucking goddamn. All right, so Rakim, uh, what is it that you're working on, man? I hear you're like doing a lot of short films and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, can you elaborate a little on that? Well, um, my brother put myself, we're, we're getting together and, and starting to move on on a different level because, like, I, I concentrated mostly on um, stand-up. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And I then, wouldn't have been able to tell that. Well, <laughs> say well, <stop. laughs> You know, cause, but the way the world now is, is shifting and everything is, people want to see things from their living room, from their homes, right. from, their, from, from their phones and all that. So stand-up is... is, is good and all that but now you have to shift gears and right. then now you have to get with the times right. so to speak especially and then since the... people aren't like going out to shows like they used to right so, and know. then they want to check you out first to see if you're right. funny and you know right. so the skit thing is is is, is coming it's i'm evolving okay. to that perspective okay. and um like i said put myself we have some things going and he tries he gets me out and like you said my, uh, my guy gato shout out to gato Trap comedy, free Gato. Um, yeah, we, we need right. free Gato. We need to free him. He, okay. He he puts the battery in my back too, and, and and he pushes me into the world of social media. So now we're doing the social media thing. So it's rock the rock him show, and whatever put is doing in your okay. show. Okay, that's cool. Um, so has there been anything that you put out thus far, or anything we might have nope. seen you in? Okay. So this is all basically your own. Brainchild and 2023. 2023. Uh, uh, you know how people make their New Year's resolutions, right. but this would be my resolution to get more with the social media aspect of okay. my career. Okay. Because I'm I'm out four or five times a week. Right. Two uh, three shows in a night. Like I I pound the ground. Okay. You know what I mean. Well, so um, how, and we're doing comedy. Right? Yes. Yes. Right. Stand up. Stand up. Right. Stand up. So how long how long have you been doing stand up comedy? Okay. Now this is gonna date me. But okay, <laughs> yeah. The, I don't know how the episodes roll, but Capital J and myself, and that's why I'm glad I came because you know what I'm saying when when Put told me Capital J was gonna be here, that was your stamp. Yeah, like that's put my stamp anyway. But Cat really, really did it for me because a lot of dudes don't know the the classic comedians. Right. Right. I'm not gonna say OGs right. because you know you could be old. And in this business, but be young. Right. right. But from the from the standpoint of where we started, uh, shit, 92, 93, maybe. Wow. I got my first stamp, Uptown Comedy Club, Fifth Ave on the corner. Right. Every Wednesday. Well, it was every Wednesday, right? Every Wednesday. Every Wednesday. Right. Yes. Right. Every Wednesday. And we would come in there and work, work, work. Right. So it's strong work out there. Um, was that something that you knew that you wanted? When did you know that you wanted to be a comedian? When my brother-in-law told me to. He said, nah. Because you were just like naturally funny? or Yeah, that's, right. he was like, nah, bro, you got to do the Apollo. You have to do this, this, do this. And then I started, and then I got in some trouble. Okay. So kind of took me out of the game. Right, right. And then when I was out, it was like, how the fuck do I get back in? You right. know what I mean? Because right. you... You can lose. The world doesn't stop right. moving because you get locked up. Right, right. So it continued to evolve. Everything kept going. And I finally got back in thanks to, 
I will say, I don't want to really say your name, but I will say your name. O.C. the bus driver. Okay. Okay. <laughs> he brought me back into the fold. It's be, well, and as far as I, I would say, um, the urban, the urban rooms. Right. Because I was working at the comic strip for 10 years. Okay. Okay. 10 years. Bartending. First black bartender. They had another one. She had tell me about it because I'm the first one. I need my picture <laughs> on the wall at the comic strip live. <laughs> okay. So... Prior to you, prior to your uncle telling you, you should consider going into comedy. No, not my uncle. See, you got to pay attention. This is, this is okay. Okay. Who's doing this interview? You and me, man. Uh, apparently not me. <laughs> apparently, apparently not, not my me. brother-in-law. Your brother, brother I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, excuse my me. My uncle, I don't even know that, man. <laughs> what's, what's an uncle? <laughs> right, what's an uncle? <laughs> uncle so no. so prior, to, prior to your brother-in-law telling you or suggesting to get into comedy, um, was there anything that you wanted to be before that uh, as a little kid? A veterinarian. A veterinarian. Okay. How many children didn't want to be a veterinarian when they were coming up? Like, I want to take care of animals. Right. I just right. love my animals. Right, right. See, and, and, and that's important. I wanted to highlight that because sometimes, you know, as long as you remain flexible, guys, you know, sometimes you can start out on one trajectory but wind up someplace completely different. Totally. Which would probably be even more fulfilling. So, you know... Always stay true to your intentions, but be open and be flexible, too, you know. So that's good. And, and one thing I want to do, say, you know, you, you hear the cliche type thing. If, you, if this is what you aspire to do, you know, follow your dream. I can, I can actually tell you, brothers that I know I started with, I watched them on television. Right. So I know this is real. Right, right. You okay. continue to move and strive and, and push and grind. Something's gonna happen to you, especially if you're talented. Right. You know, I'm. I, it it kind of hurts me sometimes, and I don't want to say I hate, but maybe envy uh, a little bit, because I know there's dudes that I rock with, and then I see them on television, I see them in cameos, I see them on commercials, and I'm like, you know what? You have to put in the work. Right. And I can say. I put in the work, but not socially, like as far as social media-wise, right. and, and people is, need to know that you exist in this world. Which is what 2023 is all about for you, right? That's yes. Cool. So 2023, you, that's when you're, at one point, you're looking at in 2020, and at what point are you looking at in 2023 to put your material out? Uh, we're already in first quarter. Here we are, right here. Boom. First quarter. Here we go. Okay. All right. Here we go. All right. Here we go. I upgraded my, my, little, my little situation where I can edit and, and do some things and put things, con content out that I want to. Right. I, too many times that we, I see people put out things and then have to apologize for what they put out. Right. Yeah. I'm kind of a free speaker and I speak my mind and sometimes, you, you know, shit gets you in trouble. So I want to be... Not cautious, I just want to be mindful of the things that I say right. and the message that I'm conveying to the audience. Right. So, and I'm really critical about myself. Okay. Really critical. Right. I'm a perfectionist to a, to a fault sometimes. Okay. I, I heard uh, a rumor that you've been known to walk around with body cams. <laughs> yeah, I don't have it on today because uh, it wasn't for today. show, but <laughs> oh Lord, I wear my body cam. Yes, I do. All right, well, why are we wearing body cam? About okay, it? for the people out there that want to know, one, I like to freak people out. Because I'm saying, I push the envelope and I'm like, I know when I come to the hood and somebody sees the body cam, they're like, what is this dude doing? <laughs> but things go down in the hood. Right. And the picture's worth a thousand words, but you know how much the video be worth? I can only imagine. Exactly. I can only imagine. Boop. <laughs> Press. Yeah, you know, I just watched the action play out right in front of me. And they be like, who recorded this? He did. From behind the counter. <laughs> they were shooting. Yeah, but they ain't shoot me. So, hence, why you gonna have content coming out real soon. <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly. You know, it's like, uh, I'm a walking show, man. Reality yes. TV all day, every day, man. Mm -hmm. Except for today. And, <laughs> and a lot of times when I see comics on stage, see, like, they, 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 they're watching, like, you can watch them. Right. I like to watch the audience perception. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Right. So it's like, okay, this was working, this wasn't, and, you know, 
it's just a different perspective. And I like my GoPro stuff. Um, I like to film. I like content. And that's why I'm glad I, I, I once again, y'all, appreciate you put, because you, you can't do everything once by yourself. Right. Yeah. Stand up, right. you can do alone. Right. Filming and video stuff. That's you, a whole other You need beast. a team. Right, right. That's you know, you need a, you need a team, and right. you need some people that believe in you, and you believe in, and then you can work together. So I appreciate the format, and you know, I appreciate right. what you guys are doing, and, and, and for having me. No, thank you, thank you. I mean, we appreciate you, especially being able to share your experiences and your time. Um, were there any people um, that you? Uh, that you drew inspiration from anybody that inspired you um, to keep going and be the person that you are in terms of you know your comedy. And what inspires me actually is what I uh, um, spoke about a little bit earlier: seeing the success that others are having, right, and knowing that you could do it that too. That I and equally or even better talented. Right. Take nothing from anyone else. Right. Because yeah. you can't you can't be upset with other people are doing and their success if you're not doing what you right. need to do for yeah. yours. Yeah, you sitting back on the chair talking about oh, I could do that. Oh he ain't even that funny. And right, and right. not even doing it. Right. So Yeah, because anyone can armchair quarterback, right? Exactly, <laughs> right. Like yeah I, I, I wouldn't have did it that I ain't way. Dak Prescott, but I could have won that game. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I could have won it. LeBron James, yeah, what? Why would he shoot it there? I was right. 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 I would have took a layup. Like, yeah, you lying ass. You wouldn't have done the damn thing. You, know, so. <laughs> you, you would have did everything you're doing. <laughs> exactly. So that is my inspiration to move on. Right. Others, especially that I know. Right. Like Pete Davidson. Like, not to throw out names and stuff like that, but I remember him when he was just a kid. Like, he was coming from Nickelodeon. He, him, Jordan Rock, and um, Ricky Velez, all three of them, coming through to the comic strip every damn near every damn day, right. hanging out with us and grinding. Right. Look at him now. Yeah. Yeah. I could, I could go further back than that from when me and Cat was rocking with others. You right. know what I'm saying? But right. those cats probably like I seen them around, but then they act like they don't they don't they they, they never meet me. What? Right, yeah. Who are you? Who? Who? What? Rock him. Isn't is he right. a rapper? Exactly. <laughs> and I met Rock him the rapper, yo, let me tell you something. That was one of the best experiences of my life. Oh, was it, man? Yes. Yes. And and the people who introduced me to him were actually more in uh, enthusiastic about introducing me to him than me meeting him and I was like what <laughs> yeah nah nah it was it was a dope um, experience and that's what this co comedy thing is it's it's a journey it's right. an experience and if anybody has any talent anything you do like like they say like I can't it's, it's cliche but keep doing it because your dreams will come true. right because I know that there's a, a, a study that said if you invest 10,000 hours into anything you become an expert, mm. you know, so 10,000 hours, man. So like you were saying, you was on the grind, you was on the grind, you was on the grind, building up those hours, yes. man, you know. On stage, right. literally. Right. Literally. Right. I've been doing comedy all my life. I'm not saying that I'm better than anyone in that respect. It's what I've been grinding on, I've right. been doing. Right. I know comedy. We know comedy. Certain people, you can't come along in less than a year and think you're going to be better than me. Right. Yeah. I don't give a fuck if we both telling jokes on the same corner. Right, right, right. Shit happens. Yeah. You hear. Don't. So, so I was one of those people that, like, yo, 25 years in, you here with me, you grind. No, I take that back. It's about the growth right. process. I can't tell talent or some, and I use him because I know him. I can't say cap, yo, you 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 going first, but I'm gonna put somebody up on stage that that ain't been doing comedy thirty fucking the hot fucking minute, right. one fucking boo, but you want to tell me you gonna headline? How you headline? Over my dude, me, 
anyone that been doing something 20 something years it's not it's a respect right factor in that in that sense but see but i would also imagine with that though uh, I wouldn't necessarily, and maybe this is easy for me to say, I'm armchair quarterbacking. But, but it's one of those deals where if you're funny, it don't matter when you go on. Like if he's headlining it and you tear that shit down before he does and he can't hold the light to you, that looks bad on him. And you know what? And there's a lot of times when you come on and you rock out and that makes it easier for the person behind you. Because they piggyback off you sometimes. Yes and a not. lot of cats are stealing cop jokes. There's, there's a bunch of jokes that are, what, what they say, um, hack, right. so to speak. Um, when people say, um, oh, I done ran out my little $25. I done, that's a hack joke. Mad comics use that. Right. Yeah. I have a joke where I said in 92 on, on Apollo, didn't even know it was going to be a joke. And I promise you, and this is going to be stamped right here on, what's the name of the show? Only Time Can Tell. Yeah, okay. Can. Well, this is what time's going to tell, and I promise you this. I did the Apollo, and Steve Harvey was the host. Right. He said, yo, rock him. I didn't know, first of all, I didn't know the log was a log. I thought it was a rock. All right, let me tell you something. I'm an ignorant mother. <laughs> yeah, man, as many times as I watched the Apollo, I said, this is a rock. They was like, it's a log. I was like, oh, shit, it's a log. So I was the log. He said, rock him, where are you from? I was like, right as I'm in Queens. What? What? That's my favorite joke ever. They ain't air that shit because I got booed two seconds later, but I'm just saying. <laughs> just saying. But I lived in that moment. Right, right. That was my time. That's the, my the, joke. The hell with 15. <laughs> the I'm hell, sorry, slapping the, myself. The hell with 15 <laughs> minutes. Uh, you just give me 15 seconds, right? You yeah, know. well, shit. That's <laughs> the, my 15 seconds of fame. <laughs> Nobody ever saw it, though. They saw me get booed, but they didn't see me get cheered. I said, oh, so shout out to your black asses at the Apollo <laughs> for making my career this way. You know, I wanted to, yo, you know how many times I wanted to quit after that? I bet, I bet. And that, and that leads me to my next question. What would you say were your three favorite things about being a comedian and the three challenges mm. that you have with being a comedian? Favorite things? Yeah. Number one, the people that I encounter and I, and I get a chance, the opportunity to meet. From the person on the corner, from the person in the stands to, to whoever's rocking out. That that is always a plus. Um, two, travel, and three, just giving someone some joy, right, right. for a little bit of time. Because sometimes, as comedians, we don't always go on stage and things are really rocking in our lives. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. So it's a lot of lot of therapeutic right. elements to this. And then you said, what was that thing? And that the three challenges, the three challenges that you mixed up. Promoters, promoters, and fucking bum ass promoters. promoters. Yeah. <laughs> That's the fucking challenge. <laughs> want to put right. their cousins and their sisters and their uncles and their aunts and nieces on like niggas. Stop! They ain't funny. Okay? I got you. I got you. Motherfucker. <laughs> Everybody's a goddamn comedian now. No, they're not! Smack the shit out of some of these motherfuckers. You crazy? Can uh, I curse on your show? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you seem you, a little you, gospel and yeah. preachy to me. I'm like, God, Lord, Jesus. What's going to be back here? The pulpit? <laughs> this dude. You, you one of the smoothest hosts in the world. Like, yeah, yeah, I'm like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, nah, because I'm just letting you rock, man. No, I'm just letting you, you. I'm <laughs> letting you rock. And then when we go take this to the edit room. <laughs> oh, Lord, Lord, Lord. You have five episodes after this shit. <laughs> you be like, yo, did you even ask a question? <laughs> this nigga answered everything. Before you even asked. <laughs> right. Before you even asked. Did he read the questions? And like, nah, I swear I didn't no more. Yo, fuck. I knew what I wanted to say. <laughs> yo, fuck, fuck all you bum ass new comics. Think y'all, yo, fuck out of here. You ain't got no time in. Fuck out of here. All right. So, <laughs> so, all right. So you said 2023, that's when you're going to go digital. 
hit uh -huh. on social media or whatever. Um, that's pretty much it. Um, where can the people find you? Uh, are you online? Do you have any uh, social media? Any you can find me here every goddamn week, making sure I'm sure who the fuck is coming up. Who's next week? <laughs> like, nigga, you ain't funny. Why you on the show? And y'all got parking out here. Yo, this is sweet. I was like, yo, I parked five blocks away. I was like, no, the fuck I didn't. There's 20 spots on your block. I'm going to fucking so, find yo. So you had to take a cab over here after you parked? Yeah, I did. I did. And the subway. I was like, yo, I ain't even have a Metro card. Like, yo, I had an EBT. They was like, yo, well, we'll take that. You can walk the rest of the fucking way. Yo. Yo. What? Yeah. Yeah, I appreciate you. Yeah, I wish you nothing but success, man. I had a good time, brother. <laughs> that was my man, Rakim. Thank you for coming out, sharing your time and your experiences. Yes. Once again, that's going to do it for another episode of Only Time Can Tell. I'm, I'm Ken. This is Rakim. I'm um, Ken. <laughs> I'm Ken. He's the black Ken, like, like yo, know, like the black Barbie Ken. I'm Ken. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget to share, like, <laughs> share, and subscribe. Okay. Don't forget to tell a friend to tell a friend, and we'll catch you next week. Peace. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I hope that you enjoyed the video. Please don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you will always get an alert when a new video drops.